Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs added something new to Photo AI. That something new is an AI brush. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use this new AI brush that is found in Topaz Labs Photo AI. We're going to be working on this image of the baby gorilla. Now, as you can see, it was shot at relatively high ISO of 6400. There is a considerable amount of noise and I really didn't now focus, it's a little bit soft. So I wanna send this image into Photo AI, not only to remove the noise, but to make it a bit sharper as well. Now I am in Lightroom, and the only reason why I'm using Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin, it does work as a standalone app and works as a plugin in Photoshop as well, is uh, from Lightroom, when I come back from Lightroom with the finished image, it's easier to A, B it, show you a before after, in Lightroom, so that's why I'm here. So I want to send the image into Topaz Labs Photo AI. I'm simply going to right click right on it, go down to Edit In, and then over and down to Topaz Photo AI. We'll keep the default settings here, and I'll just click Edit. You can see in the left hand, uh, top left hand corner there is a progress bar. Lightroom's creating that TIFF file with those specs, and it will open it up into Photo AI. Now I have my Photo AI set to autopilot. With autopilot, it automatically determines if the image needs noise reduction and sharpening and does all that automatically. The problem though with autopilot is sometimes it won't detect what you want it to detect. For this image, it didn't remove any noise. It doesn't think there's noise here to be removed. Well, I think there is, so I'm going to turn that on and we'll use the normal noise reduction. So, and then you have to let it render. In the lower left-hand corner, you can see there's a progress bar. Every time you do anything in Photo AI, it's going to have to re-render, so it may take a moment to do that. The other problem with Autopilot, when it finds the subject, it sometimes doesn't find the subject properly, or it doesn't find all the subject, or it over-selects and selects more than the subject. And why does it find the subject? What does it do differently when there is a subject in the image and it finds the subject? Well, come over here, see where it says subject, and just hover over right there. And you can see this little tooltip pops up and it says subject detection is used for blur plus noise estimation and optionally to selectively apply the sharpen module. So. What it will do when there is a subject, in this case the baby gorilla, and you could verify that by just hovering over the word subject and you'll get a red overlay over what it thinks the subject was, in this case the gorilla. And what it's doing is it's looking there and it's seeing how much noise is there. It says, okay, in my case, there wasn't a lot of noise on the gorilla, so it didn't remove any noise. Well, that's where I had to manually come in and move the slider because there was a lot of noise on the background part of the image, and I wanted to get rid of it. Uh, additionally, it will look at the subject and make sure it's in focus, and if not, it will automatically sharpen, and it did do that. Now, I am going to change the view. We're at 100% view right now. I'm going to change this to fit, and it has to re-render. Anytime you do anything, uh, change the the view or change any of the settings, it has to re-render and you're going to have to wait for a second or two. And depending on how fast or slow your computer is, this may take some time. Okay, it's done. Let's do just do a before after real quick. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Okay, so far so good. Let's hover over subject again. You see it, it selected most of the gorilla and maybe just over selected on the edge a little bit, but it didn't select his hand. It didn't select like under his ear over there. So maybe I want to add to that. Um, I want it, maybe there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of blur on the hand, but that's motion blur because he was eating. Um, so, but maybe I want to add to it. That's where this new AI brush comes in and it is kind of hidden. What you need to do is right here where it says refine, click on refine. Now, when you open this up, you'll see that it's by D, it's like the default subject. Well, if you had a portrait, you could click on portrait. In this case, it didn't change. It kept it on the baby gorilla. Oh no, it added his hand. It just took a while. I have to always wait to it for it to render. 
So it added his hand, but I'm missing this part over here. Let's click on landscape and see what it does. I suspect it will select even more. Yeah, so it selected a lot of the background, or you could do none. So in this case, you know, even though it's not a human, um, it's a baby gorilla, but it did select the gorilla's hand. But if you look down here, it kind of overselected down here. And you know, might notice now my cursor is this plus sign. And you can see as I kind of move around, see how this kind of weird red blotch comes along with it? This is actually the brush. And in my opinion, this is a work in progress. I don't think this brush is working perfectly yet. It works okay, but it can be quite frustrating. It's an AI brush, so it's actually going to be looking for edges. So when you paint, either you're adding to the subject or removing from the subject, it doesn't just make a, you can't really make a wide brush stroke and let's say remove a bunch of it from the subject. And you really can't resize the brush. I just got this plus sign. And actually the immediate previous version of this, it was a round circle and they changed it to this plus sign. And by the way, if I go up here, I am, which version is this? It should be somewhere up towards the top. I don't even know what version I'm in. I think it's, it doesn't even say, a lot of times they'll say about Topaz Photo AI. I think when I come out of this mode, I'll be able to see it. And this version has a plus sign. The previous version had a circle and you still couldn't change the size of the brush. Now for this specific image, let's say the subject selection is okay, but I want to remove these parts in here. So what I would do is I would click a subtract brush and then I would come in here and you see if I hover in there for a minute, you see how it's kind of showing you what it's going to do. You kind of paint in there and paint in there and you could see how it uh, annoyingly slow. <laughs> All right. And see what it's doing. It's not as though it was a, let's say non AI brush. And I just was using the subtract brush and I could just come in and make broad strokes and totally erase this area from the subject. You could see how it's, you got to work at it. <laughs> you got to come in and really like paint and you got to wait for it to render. It takes a second. see how how slow this could be right now in this case for this specific image you know having this selected doesn't adversely affect the end result but i'm doing this mainly and only actually for demonstration purposes just to show you how the brush works now if i'm all said and done and i didn't like it at all i could just clear my strokes and it's basically like starting over so I'm not going to click that because you can see how long this took me to get this far, right? So come in here and remove. I still have the subtract brush going and you can see it's taking a while and I having a hard time getting it removed from there. So it looks for edges and if it, it can't really find an edge, apparently it can't really remove the uh, selection. So I can't get it gone from there but let's add this part over here from the gorillas let's blow his ear so we're going to add down in here so i click the add brush over there on the right and you could see how we could add to it now so i'll mention it again in my opinion this is a work in progress um they should give you in my opinion the option to turn off the ai part of it and just have a regular brush and you could add and subtract from the subject selection just with broad strokes and optionally with the ai brush um, i guess maybe you don't really need to resize an ai brush it's looking for edges and it really doesn't matter i guess how big it might be but maybe it would be a little easier if you could make a bigger brush and i could come in here and it would look for edges way outside from where it is right now when I'm locally adding it. I actually wanted to subtract from here. Okay, like that. Okay, so that is the AI brush. Again, in my opinion, it's a work in progress. And remember that it's hidden under here. Now, when I first used it for the first time, I was thinking, well, how do I get out of this mode? 
it's like there's nothing here to close anything down or to get out of here. It just clicked around. Nothing happens. Well, I was worried I was going to click done and it was going to return me to Lightroom. And I didn't want to necessarily go back to Lightroom yet because I want to make sure that the noise reduction was adequate. So uh, what it is, though, done is for this um, refining subject mode we're in. So we'll click done and then it will bring us back to just the base screen of photo AI. Again, it's got a re-render. So you can see over here on the left-hand side um, that progress bar. So you have to let it re-render. And then once it does, hopefully it's good. And let's just do a before after. There's before and there's after. Now let's zoom in maybe a little more. Let's go into like 200% and come over here where we see the gorilla's face, which of course I want sharp, and the background, which has a considerable amount of noise. And you can see it definitely got rid of the noise, and the gorilla's face is sharp. You can see there's probably still a little noise on the gorilla's face. I could come into the remove noise and maybe up the strength. And I found it's kind of a subtle, look at I maxed it out at 100, let it render. And you can see it looks pretty good. So I think that's good. So we'll just click Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic and it will return us, and then I'll give you a before after, and that's why I have it in Lightroom, so we could better AB it between the actual raw file uh, that, of course, has all the noise and is blurry, and this, the uh, TIFF file that was sent over into Photo AI. So let's go to the raw file. Let's zoom in. Right about here is good. I think we could see the gorilla's face. You can see how soft it is. It's blurry. There's a considerable amount of noise. And here is our sharpened noise reduced image. So there's basically is before and there's after and before and after. And one more time for the people in the back. There's before, there's after. So it's a lot better. So that is the new AI brush that is found in Topaz Labs Photo AI. And I forgot to look at the um, at the version this was, but I'll have that listed in the description below this video. It actually was in the immediate previous version. They had this brush in there as well, but uh, I didn't have time to do a video on it until this version. I'm glad I didn't because they changed it. In the immediate previous version, it was an actual round circle cursor, looked like a brush, I guess. And in this version, it's just that little plus sign. So that's it. That's the AI brush in Topaz Photo AI. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>